The Biden White House is facing criticism for downplaying the alarming increase of anti-Semitism in America. Sick people have been tearing down Israeli hostage posters. And Jewish students say they're too afraid to go to class as pro-Hamas protesters rage on college, college campuses. Karine Jean-Pierre got asked about the anti-Israel bias, and her answer was a complete disgrace. What is his level of concern right now about the potential rise of anti-Semitism in light of everything that's going on in Israel? So a couple of things. Um, look, um, uh, we have not seen uh, any credible uh, threats. I know there's been always questions about uh, credible threats. Uh, and so I uh, just want to make sure that that's out there. But look, uh, Muslim and those perceived uh, to be Muslim have endured a disproportionate uh, number of hate-fueled attacks. Corrine's response was so bad that one Democrat is blasting her for providing a weak answer on anti-Semitism. I understand there's a press briefing book. I understand there's lots of topics. I understand you got to look at it. But when someone asks a simple question of, is the White House concerned about the rise of anti-Semitism? It's a simple yes answer. By the way, I know the president is concerned. That's why there's an ambassador to anti-Semitism. That's why there's a task force to anti-Semitism. Corrine now says that she misheard the question and she tried to clean up her mess at today's briefing. I understand how important uh, moral clarity is, especially at this time. So when Jews are targeted because of their beliefs or their identity, when Israel is singled out because of anti-Jewish hatred, that is anti-Semitism. You know, it's very interesting, uh, Dana, that, uh, number one, she had to look at her briefing book, and number two, she said she misheard the question in the Politico uh, article that she was quoted in 24 hours later. Right. But she seemed to hear everything else that day. It's a, stra it's a strange thing. I, I listened to it again. I can imagine that she did hear, mishear the question. But the other thing I wonder is, what about the reporters in the briefing room who listened to her answer and let it go? Mm -hmm. And not say, wait, did you, did you really just say what you said? Then the White House lets it sit out there for 24 hours. Yep. Sort of like when uh, Hamas says Israel killed 500 people at the hospital. And that's the headline that they run with. Well, now, the problem for the White House is that they're constantly doing mixed messages. Jews here in America, 2% of the population, 51% of the U.S. recorded hate crimes. OK, so right. that is just that's just a fact. Right. And I don't think that the president would need you to actually look at your book for that. And I understand it's a tough job and they're working a lot of hours. I get that. And you can maybe you're prepared for something that you didn't get. But this is the other thing I would say. Your audience is on many different levels. It's not just the people in the briefing room or people who are talking heads on cable TV because who cares about us? I do remember one thing in particular, except for I know yesterday was an important day. Be hasty, right? Just yeah. On the heels of national respect, yeah, true. TV personality day, Dana. It's true. But um, I would just give you one anecdote. So I was thinking back to when I was press secretary, there wasn't social media, okay, that came right, like, kind of the, in the mm -hmm. year after. I was never more recognized than I was when we traveled to Israel and South Korea. Why? Because people who rely on the United States for moral clarity, for the leadership, they will hang on your every word mm. if they are in trouble. And that's why it's so important to get it right. You know, Piers, um, what Dana says is accurate, that, that Jews are victims of 51 percent of the hate crimes in this country. Uh, Muslims are victims of about 10 percent of the hate crimes. Uh, but that doesn't even reflect what's going on in Europe. And it certainly doesn't reflect the whole topic that she's talking about, where Jews were being murdered. Well, she talked about moral clarity. I'd like some mental clarity, <laughs> just a mental thought process, which when somebody asks you a very simple, clear question to comment about rising anti-Semitism, which is very palpable around the world right now, and shocking, your natural reaction is not to immediately pivot to something completely different mm -hmm. in the way that she did and talk about another group of people. Um, you know, I was, I mean, I couldn't believe two things, really. One, I was in London the, the day of October the 7th, and I was walking down my high street, and the Israeli embassy is at the end of the high street, and there were already thousands of people gathered. I, I mistakenly thought they might be there in support of the people of Israel. No, they were there screaming abuse and celebrating what Hamas had done to innocent Israeli civilians. And I found that really shocking. There were thousands. 
within hours. Uh, and then I had uh, dinner at the weekend with a, uh, quite a high-profile uh, Jewish a female friend of mine who was in Israel at the time and, and flew out quite soon afterwards. And she articulated to me the sense of real fear. Mm -hmm. Well, first trauma and shock mm -hmm. amongst Jewish people around the world, yeah. but fear. And the fear wasn't just because of potential reprisals or anything to do with what had happened on October the 7th. The fear was the reaction that they were seeing on the sure. streets yeah. in New York, in London, in Sydney, people saying, gas the Jews in Sydney. These are supposedly civilized democratic societies where the instinctive response of vast swathes of these populaces in these countries was to celebrate what had happened. That's a terrifying thing for any Jewish person it is to, to witness on their television screen or in person. And so my message to, to Corinne Jean-Pierre is let, let's not have any more failings of moral clarity. Listen to the questions that you're being asked because the entire world, as you said, Dana, they're watching that podium for not just clarity but a position which makes people on the receiving end of this disgusting abuse and threats and everything that's coming with it that mm. makes them realise we are watching and we are taking this seriously. I, I thought what happened was a, a complete disgrace, honestly. Uh, Jesse, a growing number of American Jews are uh, taking courses on firearm safety, going to shooting ranges around the country as they fear for their safety. I think every American should do that. <laughs> Hispanic, black, Jewish, whoever, go get trained up. Yep. I certainly have been. I love how the next day she comes out and says, just want to clear up one thing? I love the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Does she, she turn to the wrong page in the binder? She didn't hear the question, Judge. Really? Anti-Semitism does not sound like Islamophobia. Doesn't sound like it at all. I think Jewish people are six times more likely to be victims mm -hmm. of hate crimes. So she has a real problem. The Democrats have a problem with radical Palestinian activists in their party and a Jewish issue. And for some reason, people think just because Hamas or the Palestinians are the underdogs, that you have to root for the underdogs. You don't have to root for the underdogs. The underdogs can be vicious, nasty killers. Doesn't mean you actually have to side with them. So she's, uh, in, she's in trouble. And, and I think now everybody really realizes where she's coming from instinctually oh, yeah. mm -hmm. on a lot of issues. Definitely. Wrap it up, Greg. You know what's interesting about that statistic and the statistics you hear about hate crimes? Jews are victims of 51% of the hate crimes they never mention who the victimizers are. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Doesn't it make you wonder why they don't mention that? Why they don't mention who the suspect is in certain crimes until it falls out of the news cycle? I think she heard what she wanted to hear. Uh, she stopped listening in, that, in the middle of that sentence and heard Islamophobia instead of anti-Semitism. And as a product of identity politics, she conflated groups with individuals so that hatred for Hamas becomes Islamophobia, and then a one-off racist act then becomes the guilt of an entire population. That's how it works. She's a mouthpiece for the administration that sees us as always the problem. Remember in that speech, and I'm paraphrasing what Joe Biden said, but he said that this kind of problem exists right here in America. Those, he, said, he said it in not those words, but you get the meaning. You get the meaning. Um, I just want to read something. I read a Reuters uh, piece today, right before the show. And, and, you, and you wonder how this um, political hysteria against Jews is happening. It's happening because how the media frames the story. Mm -hmm. So Reuters will say, and I'm going to quote them, Hamas assault on Israel left 1,400 dead. Mm -hmm. The next sentence, Israel airstrikes killed yep. more than 5,000 right. Palestinians. There are three things wrong with those two sentences. One, left versus killed. Hamas left. Israel killed. Two, putting the numbers side by side as if you're only supposed to compare a single variable. No good, no evil, just the single variable. You've got to learn this stuff when you're reading the news. And finally, they got their numbers from a Gaza official from that second <laughs> statement. So no wonder you're seeing thousands and thousands of students being brainwashed, yep. being part of a political hysteria, because this is how this stuff is filtered and framed. Yeah, and that explains why young people, uh, their, their belief in, in the Palestinians is so different than older people. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.